know, uh, during COVID, I basically ended up um, in Sweden. And uh, Sweden was a pretty cool country to be in during COVID because they didn't have the mask mandates, they didn't have the lockdowns as much. So um, I ended up staying there, although I am someone who's been living in uh, Los Angeles, California for over 30 years. And so then being in Sweden, uh, going from the heart of LA where everything, everything is moving super fast, um, <clears throat> I find myself uh, in Sweden in the suburbs where if you want to get something from the store, uh, we're talking about a 20 minute walk, right? So it was very uh, different uh, for me because everything slowed down and everything stopped. And it gave me some room to just get all of the stress out of my body. I started meditating. I started to be, uh, you know, in the present moment. And uh, from there, yeah, it's right. Me and Ray and some other people, we launched a community for cryptocurrencies. And um, that led to uh, doing a call every Saturday. And it was always on the topic of that in three to five years, if we play our cards right, with the way that this industry is growing, we could all become wealthy if we help each other, support each other, and approach it in a realistic way of that new industries are extremely volatile, un unpredictable. Uh, it's very easy to make a mistake. It's very easy to choose the wrong project. So we talked about that every Saturday and um, a couple of things happened and all of a sudden, um, you know, um, I went from being, I guess, somewhat of a normal, uh, uh, selling from home guy to being a, a crypto millionaire. And it was really interesting. It just happened. And uh, uh, that led to me purchasing uh, a condo in North Cyprus. And that then turned into me also selling, selling condos in North Cyprus. And I ended up traveling to North Cyprus. And I purchased my condo using cryptocurrency. I became friends with the developer and the developer turned to me one day and said, Hey, will you come with me to this meeting? Because there's a, the person that I exchanged my crypto with wants to talk to me about tokenizing uh, real estate. And I don't know anything about that subject really. So can you be my eyes and ears? And uh, let me know if it seems like a good idea to you. So I walked in to the office and there is Hakan. And Hakan is going through um, a, a plan on tokenizing real estate on the island of Cyprus. And he was talking about that. And then through that conversation, he, he started sharing a little bit about this other project that he was doing, which was uh, cryptocurrency exchange with storefronts. And when I heard that, I stopped because I had had a conversation with a friend of mine in 2016. And I had said to him, I said, you know, I see what's happening with this. I understand this industry. I see what's happening. And I see that this industry is going to continue to grow because the technology that's behind Bitcoin is better than what we have now. And so I said to him, I said, you know, as a matter of fact, I believe that one day we will see stores. We, we will see a cryptocurrency store at the Grove in the heart of LA next to the Apple store. And I said, when that happens, I want to be part of that. Like I want to have, I want to be part of that. I want to be part of launching that. I would love that. So when Hawkins says cryptocurrency stores, I react and I said, stores, what do you mean? So, well, we have a franchise where we're going to put stores all over the world. And immediately I started to just see myself owning a cryptocurrency store. And so I said, well, can you talk more about that? Because I want to, he was talking about 
tokenization of real estate. And that was the subject. And I said, you know, I really want to find out about what you're saying about these stores. And he said, well, we're here for, for this, but if you guys come back next week, I'll present what we have. And of course, you know, I listened to the tokenization and that's also a very, very interesting subject, but it was just for me, I started thinking, wow, one day I can own one of these stores. I can have a store, right? So I come back next week and Hakan is on the whiteboard and he's going, okay, so first we did this and then we did this. And he's talking about the infrastructure of Miracle Cash and more. And because he's so far beyond my knowledge and understanding of the industry or what it takes to, to have a, a really stable foundation to a company, he was introducing me to things that I wouldn't even have thought of that you needed to do a store, you know? So I followed along and he started talking about insurance and he started talking about banking and talked about wallet security and all this. And I knew right away that this guy knows way more than I know about this industry. And then he said, he said, well, so if you then uh, decided to get involved, what you would be looking at is securing a country. And I said, a country? He said, yeah. What we're doing is we're franchising and we're giving a master franchise to someone. And what they do is they control the entire country and they we split the revenue 75-25. And I looked, I said, 75, 25? He's like, yeah. I said, no, I don't believe, I don't believe that. He said, we're splitting it 75, 25 because I have an exit strategy. He said, I have products that we will be bringing in people into the financial world that have never been there before. <clears throat> They're going to give us financial information that big companies are dying to get. And so in four years with my plan, <clears throat> and I have the numbers written out, we can have a valuation of $200 billion. So for me to do that in that amount of time, I am giving away that much because that data, if you don't know it, when you sell a company, usually you'll sell a company, they'll look at the revenue, the profits, and they'll say, well, what are the profits for this year? And then they'll forecast what the company's doing. And there's obviously a, maybe a thousand factors, but the bottom line is they'll look at how much money did you make and they'll buy that company based on that number. But if you have financial data, if you have a customer base that has information that companies need, that valuation could be 30 times as much as the revenue number that you would be buying. So he said, I want to explode this all over the world. We're pretty much done with all the technology and we are on our way to rolling this out across the world. Uh, and he said, I have someone in, uh, we're currently building the first store in Amsterdam. And I was like, okay. So then <clears throat> I looked at how do I, as an individual, confirm that what he is saying is true, right? I have to know that's true. So we're talking about buying now the discussion starts to go about buying the rights to Germany. Because he said, well, we already have a huge client base in Germany. So as soon as we open Germany, we have people who are going to do millions of dollars of transaction with us because they want to move that money over to Turkey. There's 3.5 million Turks in Germany. 
and we would be the portal for them to actually get their funds over to Turkey. I said, okay. So there's millions of dollars there already. So then if I put a deal together to get a country, would you recommend Germany? He's like, yeah, I would, I would recommend Germany because we already have business there. I said, okay. So I said, well, I need to know that all this is real. So I started to go through all of the details, all of the technology. I started to go and meet with his COO, his marketing department, his, his development team to really get under the hood of, the, of this company. And I asked for the contracts with the bigger companies that um, are lined up with Mir Prakash and more. And I spent three and a half months because we were basically committing to 1.5 million. And so, you know, obviously, depending on how much money someone is investing in a company, you're going to spend an equal amount of time on your vetting, you know, um, to see that everything is there. So I looked at the trans, I already knew he was doing phenomenal business in North Cyprus. I had obviously already been a customer because I purchased my condo with crypto and he was the one that exchanged that crypto for money for the developer that I paid. And so ongoing, you know, throughout these weeks, you know, there would be deals flying through because of all the real estate being sold in Cyprus and all the there's uh, Cyprus is, is a, a island that allows gambling. So there's millions of dollars of gambling money flowing through there. And uh, because it's a country, it's not like trying to travel New York to Vegas and being able to access, you know, $100,000 for a high roller or half a million for a high roller. When you're going through a border, it's not as easy. So cryptocurrency makes that possible if there's Russians coming in or Israelis or, or even Turks. So and then I, you know, I saw that he had built an incredible amount of tech and had no debt. And I was like, okay, so all of these systems piece by piece, I dissected them and looked at them after, and then after three and a half months, I felt comfortable to come in to that deal with half a million and bring other people in on that deal so that we secured uh, Germany as a, as a team. And then right away, um, because of us looking to put that deal together, there was more people around that wanted to be part of it. And then we ended up um, doing a deal for France. So, so at the time it was finding someone who had liquid, um, 1.5 million, 2 million, whatever it takes and finding someone who understands crypto enough to feel comfortable with that number. And then finding someone in that type of that type of person that the timing was right. And so between me and Ray and CWS community, the crypto community, uh, we ended up raising about half a million dollars in two weeks with smaller investors that became part of Germany and France. And we looked at it and said, that's what that's the model and to backtrack before that we had already discussed the tokenizing of miracle cash and we sat and we were super excited about that model because what we saw is we have a massive um opportunity that we can actually now because of the technology bring the everyday person into in the the time where usually we don't have that opportunity usually these big companies 
are launched without us knowing about it, without us even being able to be part of it, because if they're going to go out and raise money for a company like a Binance or a Coinbase, they're not going to come to you or your neighbors or your friends and raise it with $5,000 increments. They're looking for 50 million. They're looking for 10 million. They're looking for a hundred million. So, so when we saw what we could do using the blockchain, we said, wow. <laughs> and you know, Hakan's a family man and, and, and this is, this is a friends and family company. And uh, he wants it that way, and he loves that part of this, that that's what it will be and that's what it is. So when we saw that, we just looked and said, will this work? And we looked at it and we said, on paper, this works. On paper, this should be an ex incredible success. And so May 15, we did our first presentation for uh, for Spain, and we introduced it and said, "Hey, here's what it is." And uh, I think we got our sale in the first day or two. It's actually uh, Jordi, uh, uh, one of our uh, uh, salespeople now. Actually, she's in the company. She had the first sale. And then from that, it started to happen, and uh, we started to connect with people. That they, they looked at it, they were excited, and of course they were excited. We had something real in this industry that is so full of just money games and people who want to make a quick buck, uh, and a lot of insincere people who set out to do this uh, to to start companies just literally just to take people's money and we've been through it it's set up to take your money so then we're looking going oh my god after eight you know after whatever years so starting our crypto community all of a sudden we have what looks to be the most amazing crypto opportunity but crypto company something real brick and mortar to offer to all of these people that we know that have been looking for something real in this industry. And here we are, brick and mortar crypto uh, company. So then I thought with everyone, I said, I think this is the, a good time to um, just open up a little bit on the tech that I was looking at. And uh, so that, and this is really gonna be um, you know, Rui is going to come on with me. We're going to do some screen shares and I'm going to talk to him. And this is because there's a lot of people out there that are dream stealers. There's a lot of people that will say, oh, that's not real because we're used to things that are not real. So they're used to that. Usually there's too good to be true stuff going on and it's not real. And I have to admit, while I was vetting this company, I, my setting was, there's no way this is real. There's no way he has this. There's no way that this company could be formed on a small island in Cyprus. So I was expecting to be disappointed and to walk away from it. I was expecting it because it is so unbelievable that something like this could be real and that it could be coming from a small island in the Mediterranean. It's really those two things to me were how does this fit all right so um that's you know that's 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 my story and then so i formed cash flow nft uh cash flow nft is the brand uh it's it's uh, owned by a company out of lithuania miracle uh, uab out of uh, lithuania so we, we my guy yeah I don't mean to interrupt, but can I steal two minutes? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Um, I want to just roll and talk about at when that point was. It was a humongous point because 
I think it was uh, January, early, early February, I came down for about three weeks, saw it, went back home to Arizona, and you called me and you're like, hey, come right back. We got a table at the World Crypto Expo in Dubai. <clears throat> and at that point, we were trying to market uh, the entire, um, uh, the entire license. You know, you had to have a, you had to have a lot of money. It was, you know, it was over a million dollars, and we're there, and, and we had a lot of, you know, we I think we had the best opportunity in the expo. You know, you saw a lot of different, a lot of the same stuff, them battling each other. And when they saw our storefronts, they were walking by, going, "Oh my God, where where did you get this from?" So, and I remember coming out of there and booking these fancy dinners with you know a couple of millionaires and and i remember you and i were walking away going huh i mean it, we were it was nice but it was just like i don't know about you michael but i felt to my heart i'm like is this the right way you know they're already millionaires and, and i always had the community our community in the back of my mind but i'm like god it's like you know over a million dollars you know and I so remember when we came back from Dubai back to Cyprus, we were like, okay, we had these lists of people that had money and, and, and I'll never forget when you had that, that it was kind of like a, a picture of a pizza on the board, you and Hawkin, and I was there and I was just kind of just, you know, the third man there just kind of soaking it up and three of the slices of the pizza were shaded. And I was like, well, you know, what, what is that? And you're like, well, you know, that there's some things left in France. And I go, okay, how, how much was the whole pizza? And you're like, oh, 1.4 million. So I'm like, okay, so every slice is is about 140,000. And I remember, you know, going to bed that night at your pad, waking up, and I go, you know, what if we took those three slices and created kind of micro shares? And you're like, huh? And I remember, I went, I went. Because I didn't know what, what was going to happen, I go let me let me take this to the community and see if anyone would be interested. But I go give me sixty days to do it. I'll never forget. I told you because I didn't know. I go let me take these and let's see in sixty days what can happen. And um, uh, I remember I did. I, I called an emergency Zoom for the community. I'll never forget. Dina helped me, and it was a horrible presentation. You talking about presentations that we have now with slides and info and projections and real numbers i drew um i drew an ugly house and i said okay this is the store <laughs> you know, I, I went over the vision and took about 30 minutes and dina helped me and i remember calling micah two days later and i go we're sold out he's like what they were sold out they bought them all they bought all the micro shares and i think we had like 27 at the time in France and 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 credit to Micah because in my head I went, okay, when's the next expo? And back to trying to sell the, <laughs> the licenses. And Micah being the visionary he is, he went into his cave. He kind of disappeared for around three days from me. He went into his cave and started creating. And he came out of the cave and he came into the office, the Miracle Cash office. And uh at that point, um at that point, we um, we met. We met, and he basically said, "We're totally changing the way we're going to market this." And at that point, everything changed. He goes, "This was meant. This was meant for the average person to get involved and literally become financially free, not because of sweat equity, because you know they they're 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 purchasing you know a." a an NFT or a membership and or whatever it is called. Supporting miracle. Supporting yeah. Miracle. yeah. Yeah. And um I remember, you know, Spain was our first country out really and we so it was kind of like the, the beta test. I was I was nervous. I never told my kids. I was real nervous. I'm like, oh man, is this really the way we changed he literally changed the the direction of the company at that point. In, in three days and we came out and I'll never forget it. We never looked back. We sold Spain in 31 days or 32 days. And here we are. And the, I mean, it's just, you know, I just wanted to go more in detail of when that happened and yeah. what happened and, and how you did it. So it's just, it was, it's unreal. And, and at the same time, 
we had a, a group that had signed a contract to do UK <clears throat> and they had a schedule um, of funds transfer and through that it became a, a real mess and we saw uh, the power that a franchisee has on the company so you know um because of everything that i was doing at the time um Hakan brought me into a room and sat me down and he said you know i'm going to give you something that i wouldn't sell for 100 million and he said, I'm going to give you a piece of the company. And if someone came in here today to wanted to buy it for a hundred million, I wouldn't sell it. He says, as a matter of fact, I have people who keep asking me to come in 50, hundred million. I don't want to do that because I know what that means. As soon as that is in there, everything changes and we will not have we can't do, you know, what we want to do anymore. And he said, you know, <laughs> this is funny, actually. So, so he said, this is what I'm giving you. And I looked at it. It was insane. And I just looked and I said, are you sure? Okay. He said, yeah, I feel that you should be uh, an owner. And I was like, okay. I said, that's really generous. You know that, right? He's like, yeah, I know. I said, okay. And he says, but you're VP of sales. I said, okay, VP of sales. And they're kind of like, you know, went in one ear and out the other. And uh, <laughs> two days later, after I'd gotten through that I was an owner of, of Miracle Cash and More, I realized what VP of sales meant. Well, VP of sales meant that we need funding up until the point that Miracle Cash runs its commercials and starts cranking in the, on the international scale and revenue starts pumping in from our services and products. And I went, oh my God, <laughs> that's my role. <laughs> that's my role. And I had no idea, no idea how we were going to do that. And I just said, well, if he sees that in me, then maybe he sees something that I have yet to discover about my capacity. Because if I went to a thousand companies with my resume, trying to become VP of sales, it would be 1,000 no's. I can tell you that right now, it'd be 1,000 no's. But that's the interesting thing about life. When God delivers you into a position he wants you to do, you're called to do it, and there's help from above right so in the last uh four months cash to nft we've done over six million dollars in sales six million in sales and we are continuing to increase and i believe that we are very close to doubling and tripling our sales over the next month or two vegas is going to be a huge event very exciting so okay with no, just, just, I want everyone to get that we're real people. We're real people who have been through it. We have been through it. We've been taken to the cleaners, but other people who are not sincere. Okay. So, so we are so excited to represent something real. We're so excited because there's so many people in this industry that have been looking for something real. So this, this is absolutely 100% a sincere project that is intending. And I believe we can do it together. You're as much a part of this as we are now, right? The voice, the passion, and what we're doing together is actually coming into this industry as a community of people who, who are in a position to become wealthy from this company winning and so we're doing everything in our power i mean not sleeping working all day taking you know i mean we're talking about this is it's it's an intense what's happening in the background with the team all right <clears throat> so Rui, let's uh let's kind of look at some of the stuff here 
it's not going to be that super polished smooth presentation but that's what it is when we go and we sit and there's a group of us and we're looking at tech it's bumpy and it's it's not like all pop but uh you're here this is the powwow this is when we're sitting around the fire and we're really talking about you know what's happening on our tech side so really are you there Maybe um, we haven't made you co-host. That would be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> Hello, Micah. Hello, Hello, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be in front of you. And actually, another pleasure for me to speak about the tech stuff, as Micah <laughs> tells about. Uh, dozens of people, my team working on this project for months now, more than a year actually. And uh, it, this is our first chance to meet who meet with people who actually uh, help us to do what we do. Uh, thank you. All right, all right. So I'm gonna sort of we're gonna be kind of back and forth. Um, I I you know will be just working with you now, Rui, talking through some of this stuff. So what what is your sort of uh, title? We talked about this the other day, but uh, BaseFi is the tech company that's contracted with us to create everything that needs to be created for the company. You're the lead developer, I take it, right? That's sort of the... I'm the project manager of this. Uh, actually, I, I, I'm just uh, directly involved in business intelligence part of it. So I'm the reporting guy or budgeting and reporting stuff. Uh, okay. but, uh, I'm just project manager for all the world of the whole team, which is consists of, as, as I said, more than 30 people or so, dozens of people, let's say. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm just talking to, to, for, to the, for them. I am the people who talk. By the way, you talk, tell me I am the tech guy, but I speak with them and they tell me they are the tech guy. Uh, okay, okay. So, <laughs> what what makes what makes your team the team that we want to work with? What why are you guys so good? Like, what is it that makes you you, you great? What do you think? <laughs> this is an extremely new business, and people are really interested in doing this stuff. And actually, we worked with uh, some of the largest uh, companies in Turkey who are just trying to step into NFT business. And we are right now and doing something different uh, with this project. Uh, most NFT projects are simply collectibles, if I might say it. Say, right. Know, there is no real backing on it. And for developers, part, while we are working, of course, we are just making codes and that kind of thing. But when we are working and we know there is something behind it, uh, it makes us, you know, excited about exciting about this stuff. And also. Uh, in our business, it's hard to see shops, people, you know, this kind of kiosks, uh, this kind of terminals. Uh, right. Very exciting. Well, you're speaking of the NFT project, but I'm speaking of everything. I'm speaking of Miracle Cash. I'm speaking of everything that you guys are, you know, building for us. And I know you're also Cash for NFT, but you're also Miracle Cash. And, um, You've done uh, you know, great work there too. So. Uh, thank you. It, it's a great opportunity to work with the, you know, the, there, there are classical financial instruments all over the world. And for almost 20 years, I have been working on many financial projects as well. Mm -hmm. Seeing them and building them on a new way of doing business is obviously interesting for myself and for my team as well. So this is... So you're saying that you guys are building infrastructure for like the financial industry, like banking and yeah, we were, and but right now we are uh, imagining new ways to do business, new ways yeah. to finance them. Some of them will uh, be probably will be copied in the future. I'm still being copied, by the way, yeah. and and some of them will you know create new traditions. That that's the way why we are very excited about it and paying this much time and effort on this project, Mike. Yeah, okay. So now we're, uh, we wanted to look at, um, there's something that we have, and then we're going to share a little bit more about this particular product, but this particular product has no borders, and it's our virtual point of sale system. And because it has no borders, we had taken that out of the, the MFA. 
because we would we would have no way to actually isolate the sale to a country uh, because of the nature of this. So we looked at it and said, well, it can't really be in the MFA, but we have found a way to to make that product related um, uh, relevant to cash flow NFT. So do you mind? Uh, should we take a look at this? And um, I just wanted to forewarn you on this uh, screen sharing thing that there's a function. Um, maybe Daniel, if you can pop in, there's a function where people can start <laughs> writing on our screen. So we don't want that. So uh, once you launch the <coughs> screen share, maybe Daniel, you can walk Rui through to, to turn that off in case. Right. So uh, from this, which project to actually. Uh, by the way, just a, a few days ago, Maga came to me and asked me how we can you know, make a presentation. I said just a couple of weeks ago, we made a presentation, but it took three hours just to go over what we did two and a half months ago, all right? Yeah. So you wish me to show some of our projects or just an overview of what we are doing for the last two and a half months, right? Yeah, I mean, let's talk about that a little bit. So the last two and a half months, what have you and your team been doing for lights, please? All right. Really, I sent you a text message, buddy, in the uh, chat. I sent you a chat message. So. Can you see my page right now? We can, yes. Um, see maybe I can go in here and turn this thing on. Let's see. All right. For the last two and a half months, what we are working with. First of all, we are not just working with just uh, some new projects that come out, coming up. Uh, right now, I will continue with that. But actually, we are uh, doing some backroom stuff. Uh, first of all, for the CRM for new employees involved in uh, in this, uh, in Cyprus and in other countries, but also for our new shops, we completely overall changed uh, our CRM CRM, and now it's uh, both. But it's much easier and also uh, it is much easier to use, much easier to learn. And as Micah said, can you, uh, our goal is to make it simpler. Can you explain what is a CRM? What okay. The CRM uh, is actually, now the word is used in technical terms in many ways, but right? it's usually used as customer resource management also, that kind of thing. But usually, uh, currently we are using it as uh, back office uh, workers the sites the website that back office workers will use also people in our physical shops will use we call them all crm uh, that's uh, we improve it in order to catch up with the newest technology also uh, because of the language barriers in different countries obviously uh, we are going it's english or spanish is not a problem but as you as things uh, come one by one and there are new languages that we are not ready for them so uh, we prepared a system just to make sure it will be effective we can be used in any country and any language whatsoever also in each country we have some new challenges with crm obviously every new country has some limitations some new laws uh, and we try to change it with each country currently this new crm will uh, let us able to change it more effectively in time so also, let, me, let me stop you right there mm -hmm. so here's the thing that that one needs to understand right so to actually put stores in different countries across the world these are the challenges about doing that that miracle cash and more have been working on for over two, three years now. So it's not just find a store, make it pretty, open the door. This right here is what it takes to do that. And the, 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 the different details, the challenges that that comes with 
is really sort of what uh, Rui is sort of pointing to now. Language, uh, laws, right? So from country to country, that all has to happen or you can't do what we're doing. So go ahead, Rui. Okay, these are the general changes. As you said, we used the previous system, the first system for a couple of years, and we need some improvements. Also, we made the CRM for our future use. It's quite like, uh, you know, put um, uh, you know, put something in and work kind of stuff. Uh, we can change it pretty easily right now. So this is why we needed a new one, and we worked on it about six months. It's just back office work. We know, but we needed something like this. This is what we completed after six months of work last June. End of June, we completed this. Great, great. So you're saying that the CRM, the new improved version, is at this stage functional and yeah. can be used in these countries like Turkey, yeah. Germany, France, and the UK. And the Netherlands. Uh, yeah. Netherlands is a you know extremely different way of doing things and yeah, yeah it's, it's so sort they of all sort of they all function a little bit differently depending on the country. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a great challenge and obviously in time we will face new challenges. I we mean, we can't know in a month time something in Germany will change and we will have to face something new or completely new and we need to change our CRM accordingly to in that country and this uh, architecture will uh, help us to do it as quickly as possible okay and how many do you have on your team that's in working on this um currently it's a it's a extremely hard, hard question uh, there are many teams but crm was a, a large teamwork I really hard to give numbers, but I'm sure one right? thing, there are just five testers working on this area, you know, just test yeah. the part. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. just their number. All right. So these, uh, so these are in, these are sort of screenshots. So let me yeah. read. Uh, go back there real quick. So just going to read through this. Okay, uh, this is the end of this, you know, uh, CRM part in this shape. I will continue with uh, Fireblocks. Uh, you know, there was investment transactions on new CRM fixed uh, the network because obviously there is a connection between the next topic I want to maybe talk about the Fireblocks. What is Fireblocks and why they, they are why interconnected with new CRM and Fireblocks? Uh, uh -huh. Continue with it. Let's do it. Okay, five blocks. This is something huge. Uh, from a customer's per point of view, nothing has changed, by the way. Uh, why five blocks is extremely important? First of all, insurance. We were using five blocks for insurance, uh, our crypto insurance services. We were make, making payments, but up, uh, since last July, beginning of July, we to complete the transfer to our system, the back uh, connection with our blockchain connections to Fireblocks. What does Fireblocks do? Fireblocks is now currently a world market leader about uh, in services with connections to all crypto networks and offering their customers. Uh, it's obviously just B two B service uh, in the sense uh, customers uh, to keep their wallets in their system. It's all. I, also offers new insurances for theft, the, uh, frauds, that kind of thing. That's a, a, a big plus for using something like Fireblocks. Also, the best thing about Fireblocks is whenever they add some new coin there to their system, by the way, hopefully Mircoin will take its place there some, some time later. Nice. Uh, whenever a coin takes place in Fireblocks, uh, you can edit pretty much pretty easily. You don't have to make some uh, manual connections to your own system, etc. You just have to connect Fireblocks, uh, and you ask their, uh, you know, they take you take their information and you add to your own system. So the bullets, all transactions, everything is happening at the Fireblocks level, and it's you control everybody's rules there. It's a service uh, in technical terms. It's just a service offering us a service, and we are now begun using it. 
we transferred every user's votes from uh, that classical, I don't know, maybe let's better to say traditional way into this new Fireblock service. All right. Uh, the best creating a Fireblock our software, right? Yeah. And now we are working on uh, the Fireblock's architecture and direct connection with them. Uh, the, for the customer part of it, the best thing is probably insurance, as I said it. But from the developer's perspective, we can easily add tens of uh, coins, which whatever coin we wish to add to in our system. Hundreds, uh, maybe over a thousand. Yes, uh, it's now it's not a technical issue, but a business decision. You know of how many yeah. coins make to work it. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And obviously, we try, there are some financial, uh, you know, the uh, workflow of this crypto world changed because of fireblocks. But I really don't. If you wish, I can enter details about it. But um, I don't know. It's fine. I think uh, the details of that is maybe overkill. Um, tech, tech sometimes with people is, you, you know, they 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 show up not knowing at all what this is and i think that so there's there's going to be a percentage of people that are highly technically uh uh in, in that space of understanding this stuff but for me what what i really wanted everyone to understand is the level of technology that we have and i think even if you don't know technology you get a sense of uh, that this is this is very big of what you have to be able to do to be able to do what we're doing you know stores in all the country physical locations is such a big difference from popping up a website and start selling you know to all corners of the world compared to having you know physical locations it's a whole nother whole nother game and what we're pointing to is where is the competitor how would they show up? How would they compete? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how much money they have, they still have to go through this to get there. So is it possible that we will be the only storefront cryptocurrency exchange? It's possible, right? It's possible. So, cause this is what it takes, you know, the CRM, the wallets, the license, the regulations, the, it's, it's, a, it's a huge project. All right, let's go on. Okay, uh, as a beginning, we make some tests. Uh, this presentation was made about two weeks ago, and we made some tests and added some coins, uh, just three coins, right? By that time, we are asked to add 100 more coins just to begin with, and we began uh, adding them. Currently, 25 or so more coins added into the system with tests and we are adding as i said it's not a technical issue now just a business issue and testing issue by the way you know when you add some points you need to check with all mm -hmm. the translations yes. okay so this interface that we're looking at is what you are looking at this is not our site this is firebox yeah. no, api no. type thing right yeah this is uh, exactly firebox offers a lot of security you know, they offer uh, the insurance is backed by Liot London. What, what, yeah, Liot. so if, if no one's ever, oh, ever no. seen it, there's news sometimes where it says this thing got hacked and X amount of millions of dollars were siphoned out from it. Okay, mm -hmm. so when you see that news, if you were on that exchange keeping your coins there then you could possibly be a victim of that because it's not insured you go to your wallet and you used to have twenty thousand dollars worth, worth of crypto in that wallet that was supposed to be uh protected by the company that you trusted but oops it's gone and it oops it's gone and it's really gone there's no one to call there's no one to say this isn't fair I want my money back, right? Can I have my money? This is my life savings, whatever. So in this in this platform, if that happens to Fireblocks, 
there is an insurance company that will come in. Yeah, you're right. You had 20 grand. Here's your 20 back. That's what happens. That's the difference. And uh, that's a huge part of this, uh, that your funds or whoever's funds that are sitting on um, on the platform are secure. Hawkins called me, so let me take a minute. You, you can go. Actually, there are, we are under audits by Lloyds on this as well, and our managers also under uh, right now. The issuer, are, the, the issuers is uh, also added, so that our managers should be audited. So there are, as I said, there are many layers of insurance with fireblocks. Um, Miracle Cash Coin. Uh, sorry, just names. All right, uh, Miracle Cash Coin. We have we created two coins. We are on the work of creating our second coin, but the first coin will be a stable coin that will be used in currently private lane uh, Miracle Cash and more network. Uh, the coin is minted. Uh, white paper was created, uh, requested because now currently we are on our way to apply if we can be added into uh, prior blocks as well uh, at at that moment uh, the miracle cash coin mir coin right now we are thinking thinking about will be added into the list of one of those thousands of coins that Fireblocks is currently offering its customers it's closed network right now uh, by the way and it's on ethereum uh, it's ethereum based it's Coin. There you, there you go. go. Miracle Cash Coin is known as a stable coin. So when we do our presentations, we talk about tokenizing things. Well, this is a dollar that's tokenized, right? So for every Miracle Cash Coin that goes into circulation, and a dollar goes into an account that is protected by a third party. So why is that important? It means that, okay, so if you have a, a, a digital unit, that represents something real that's sitting in an account. If we have access to that account, then that digital unit is no longer backed by the dollar. So, so when you when you look at USDT and you look at the stable coins that are out there, if you're familiar with that, they don't have that. They have access to the money, which means that it could be, and it could also not be backed by a dollar. It could be <clears throat> kind of faked, right? So, the, so when they audit USDT, what they're finding is there, there's, a, there's about $2 billion missing, okay? That's not good. So what Miracle Cash and More has done is set up that structure because Haka comes from the financial industry where there is regulation. You can't mess around. And he said, even though there's no regulation here, specifically here, I'm going to regulate our company myself by setting up a situation where we can't cheat the customer. So the, the money goes into an account and is protected by a large firm and no dollars goes in and out of that account unless that firm's approve it and it has to match up. If there's a million miracle tokens in circulation, there has to be a million dollars in that account. It can never be a million here and 1.5 million digital units out there. In our situation, we can't do that. And how can set it up so that we can't do it? Because, right, uh, someone comes along or buys the company, whatever, and all of a sudden they're like, well, we need half a billion. Can we just borrow it from the Miracle account just for now, because we just need to do this thing. It's not a big deal. We're not really um, dishonest people. We're just, we're really protecting, you know, we want to build this good company and, we're justified in borrowing half a billion dollars out of that fund. That can't happen with us, and it can happen with other stable coins. Just so you guys understand that situation. Go ahead. <laughs> with customer dashboard upgrades, we totally changed all our almost all our uh, customer dashboards, uh, user UX and UI. The reason was uh, 
as once again I will refer to you, Micah, we need to make it as simple as possible for a newcomer uh, to this industry. So it's completely a new, we have a new customer dashboard which has more information for the newcomers or also details for uh, some experts as well. But we completely change it. Uh, if you wish, we can point to go over it, but it will take a lot of time. Uh, we added a lot of charts from uh, with our uh, partners, uh, a lot of menu options, uh, graphic contacts, some analysis for newcomers as well. Also, also we added some our new products there. Um, so, my I really can't speak about this. Actually, I spoke about this three hours a couple of days ago. So, you yeah. need to stop me and maybe we can just come to go over, over it. Yeah, I mean, I would like to do, is it possible for us to do the, the virtual pause and then maybe we can show just this, a quick video on how our, how our physical terminal works. So, that okay. is a very good no. video on that. All right, now we are uh, moving from uh, Miracle Cash and Net, um, Cash and More website to and, uh, to another product, by the way, uh, Miracle Pay. Actually, we are very proud of it. Uh, may I, sh should I open the YouTube video here, Michael? Or yeah, yeah, let's do that. That's fine. <laughs> And I'll touch a little bit on how all how all of this sort of comes together. So if we were to look at, at the excuse me one second, I just get <laughs> we have some dogs here. Hello. All right. This is just the uh, terminal post of things. It's also, also a user guide for so uh, the physical post. We've yeah, got thousands of these. They're ready to go out, by the way. Yeah. And currently working, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Very, very, very nice. Very nice. Thank you. So what happens here, can you talk a little bit about what happens in the background when that after that transaction happens? How does it work for the retailer? What type of options? Sorry. Exclusive deals. No worries. Okay. Sorry. Did you hear me, Roy? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, how does it work? Actually, it has two sides of it, two parts of it. First, if you are a Miracle Cash, if customer is a Miracle Cash, or more customer, customer or not, when customer comes and if he, that person is a Miracle Cash, or more, uh, also part of Miracle Cash, or more, and has an app, uh, simply uh, two merchants says I'm a uh, customer of part of Miracle Cash and More Net Network and can just simply show a QR. With when the QR is read by the terminal, the money transfer uh, instant, instantly happens behind the screens uh, to, to a database transfer from a wallet to another instantly. So the money transfer from one part to other and uh, the commission that the Miracle Cash earns transferred into another account so that's as simple as that by the way so, so okay so if if um, i'm in peru mm -hmm. and i needed to convert over to peruvian dollar i don't know if they have but uh <laughs> so 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 what how does it how does it get the rate like what's what's the way that it, it make, makes that calculation right away. So obviously, there is no uh, fiat hard currency transfer in the, uh, in the general idea of it. So only crypto is transferred. Yeah. You enter, a, let's say, $10 amount of it. And it instantly, and you tell a merchant to ask the customer with which crypto that person wants to pay, let's say Bitcoin. Then when a uh, merchant enters Bitcoin there, it's automatically transfers into uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin is transferred. Then Bitcoin can be turned into fiat. So uh, that's okay. how things work. So, so, actually, so if I want it to happen yeah. immediately, I can have it happen immediately. In, yeah, yeah, immediately. Yeah. It happens and immediately. Does it go into like one fiat first and then it switches over to the local currency because if i'm in peru and i have a shoe store and i sell a pair of shoes mm -hmm. i want that money in my bank and i don't want to be sitting on bitcoin that loses 10 percent value overnight i want it to be that money right you know i don't want to be in yeah, there I understand. I do. <laughs> that's uh, the business part of things uh, obviously money transfers instantly but behind it uh, how the company will pay to the, its merchants is uh, our, our decision, by the way. Obviously, we can make it instant, uh, we can pay instantly, but probably we need, we'll add some time. But it's, as I said, it's just, it's a complete business decision to tell the truth. Because as you said, it, there, there, let's say I don't want to, I accept dollar from my customers, but I want to use, uh, let's say, and, uh, Peru, I don't know really what the currency they use in Peru. Uh, <laughs> then we need to transfer it on the back office and should find a way to send them. But it's all financial transactions up to yeah. that point. So, so, so at that point, the money will be in an, in an account. And so if we're opening, say, that particular country, we need to be able to actually move that money to that country uh in a in a swift fashion um so every time we look at can we do business there a lot of it has to do with can we facilitate the service 
in that country with its laws and its regulations that they have. So when people are asking me like, can, I, can we do this now, you know, if they're in a country that we haven't opened yet? You know, my answer is, well, you know, we have to actually take steps to be able to open our, our business in uh, each country that we're, we're in. So that's the business side of things and regulatory side of things uh, to the company. Yes. Um, so like should we, should, I know we've done a lot of tech, but it, it, do you want to show the virtual? Uh, yeah, I really like to. Yeah, uh, the, the virtual point of sale is basically if a website wants to accept crypto, we can tie into that site through what's called an API. What's that, abbrevi what's that abbreviated? It's what? API is what? What does that mean? Do we know? By the way, I <laughs> Access you know, protocol. Yes, that's right. yes, but... <laughs> Let's go back to our computer engineering course. Yeah, right. right. It's just been API for a long time. I forgot what I meant. Um, so it's basically, it connects to the website. The website, you go to the website, all of a sudden you see, hey, you want to buy this, this uh, TV using crypto? And then you click on that. And then we then will be the company to facilitate that transaction. And so here's the simplified page for demonstrating sort of what the experience would be for the customer. And this is really important. I have worked with crypto uh, 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 point of sale systems and they've been very weird and hard. And so when you look at this, this is uh, to me the best I've seen. Here you go, Gail says application programming interface. Right. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I will not uh, forget it for the rest of my life. For, for <laughs> I stumped you. What is it called? Stumped yeah. you? Uh, 20 years since college. All right. This right. is just a you know, demo page for uh, merchants. Uh, we are showing them. Uh, this is simple cart just, and you have $12 purchase, and you just want to pay with crypto you know like credit card paying with credit card let's say here it's right and you can pay with crypto yeah uh there's a new this is a secret obviously it's a demo screen but simply you are you are a customer buying from a merchant let's say you choose let's say bitcoin this is usd because the currency on the card was the usd currently working with four hard currencies usd pound euro and Turkish lira. Mm -hmm. So, here you see, and I'm a Ripple Cash customer. It just asks some QR. Oh, come on. Right, right. My question is too, uh, would they be able to... Sorry, I need to close my camera so the camera, I will show camera so just a uh, moment. My own, I'm closing my own picture no right now. No The QR code kind of moved uh, a little bit. Okay. So you just bought those shoes, huh? Yeah. That's All right. this, that's it. <laughs> and the payment happened. It's you know the I made this presentation I think the fourth time and it's both easy and hard because it's extremely easy because. It happens this point. This is what That's I it. need to show you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, is that uh, Harris? Is there a certain amount of potential? Um, uh, the amount that you want um, to send is that baked into that QR code, or do you have to type it out? Uh, actually, to no, it's not typing. It's typing the QR code. It works uh, like that. When you you are a customer of Miracle Cash and more, so when we see your QR code, actually at the back office, we are uh, sending uh, with the QR code. We are expecting the service expects uh, as soon as reads this, try to transfer this amount to us. If it can transfer it with this QR, it, it does and payment successful. If it can't. It turns back 
no, it's a failed transfer to both merchant and the customer. So hmm. it doesn't actually offer a you know uh, amount inside it, but it's expecting to see it. When, whenever it reads the uh, this QR checks its uh, the user's wallet. Yeah. So 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 then like if it's if it's through Miracle Cash, we have a little bit more of an ability to 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 do that. But if it's an outside like another exchange, then maybe it's more manual, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a different process, or completely different process. Obviously, it's yeah. our goal to you know make as many as customers in Miracle uh, Network because it's both quick, easy, and no transfer fee, gas fee whatsoever. And it's all right. okay. All right. Well, I feel and think that I've overloaded everyone with tech today, <laughs> so I don't want to do. Uh, overload people too much on this. So I want to wrap this up uh, on that note. And I want to thank you tremendously for coming on. I know maybe this isn't necessarily what you do every day, but you did fantastic. And we appreciate you thank so you. much and everything that you and your team does for the company. So thank you so much, Rui. Um, you're much appreciated by us. So I thank you once again to you personally and to everybody else for opportunity it's really very rare for us to see people uh, you know appreciate from, out from behind the screen it's very rare <laughs> all right okay thank you so much ruby and i'm going to turn it over to ray because i think you you would be good at directing the flow of what's coming next um we have underestimated i think the time uh, a little bit so um let me know, Ray, what you think is best. And I know we have Hakan just finished up the first game of the season because there is a miracle football team. And uh, he's very excited because they won the opener. And uh, here we are stealing him away from the celebrations of that, which is uh, <laughs> one of the hardest things to do is to get Hakan away from the football field uh, because his passion outside of building billion dollar companies is building a winning football team and i'm talking about football in the sense of how they do it in europe all right so ray are you still yes ready? i am can you hear me uh yes well we're we're gonna flow this call we're gonna shift gears a little bit before we bring hot just for you know five ten minutes um we have two uh in really industry legends uh on this call right now and um one of them we go way back with another company Monica and i and daniel petricelli uh we're so happy that he's going to become our community trainer uh, another one he will be speaking in vegas he is also an nft holder and uh, they want to talk they're both going to be um uh blessing us on stage in um my opinion the biggest event that we've ever had in this company's history it is it is our inaugural event coming up at the end of October, early November in Vegas. We have none other than Mr. Mark Asetta and Arnon Barnes. And they want to talk to you about why getting to Vegas is so, so important for the company, for yourself, uh, for everybody involved. We're really gonna really we've launched this company, but we, we're gonna we're gonna light the fuse of dynamite in this company yeah, in yeah, Vegas. We have three powerful speakers because uh, Dolph is also on the line so ah Dolph the Ruth <laughs> oh my god this is uh I didn't know Dolph would be out so Dolph the Ruth also uh all three of them you're going to be meeting uh meeting them in Vegas so I don't know who wants to go first I, I, I know so that like Mark that. is in, at an event Dolph is in the middle of also traveling yeah Mark, Mark's calling us from uh, uh, Mark's calling us from an event in Paris, France. I know Arnaud is in London, calling in, and I don't know where Dolph is, but uh, the, I believe one of our leaders is unmuting you guys. Um, so whoever wants to go first, guys, <laughs> we just need to well, unmute. There we go. Look at Mark. Hey guys, uh, appreciate you having me on, and uh, I'm. You know, just sitting here and listening for a few minutes, I am definitely not a tech expert, so my head was swimming a little bit, Micah, but it was, again, just really 
awesome to hear, you know, what a high level of expertise you and the team have and, you know, how you're really differentiating what we're doing from everybody else. So um, I just want to share with everyone, I'm truly honored to be a part of this organization. I did indeed get a chance to know Ray and the other gentlemen going back many, many years ago and uh, definitely feel like it's divine intervention. We've come back into in each other's lives. So, you know, when they talk to me, um, certainly part of what we want to be able to do at our events is to make you, you know, more savvy as far as understanding investments uh, for the people who want to be able to get other people to get NFTs and be compensated in that way. We certainly want to teach and train you how to do that, but more so they really just wanted to have a, a large amount of personal development, things that really help take people's lives to the completely next level. And that's what I'm doing here with a group of people in Paris. Uh, in the near future, I'll be doing it in the United States, and then I'll be on the road doing it in Asia. That's what I've been doing pretty much for the last 25, 30 years. And again, I'm just glad that the guys intersected with me so they had a little bit of an idea of what we're doing. But the idea is to create uh, much more than a wealthy community, or shall I say, to create a wealthy community in more than one way. Financial wealth is great, but when you're when you're wealthy in all different ways, wealthy with your relationships, wealthy with your health and your mental health and all that kind of good stuff, that's really where somebody becomes a champion in every area of their life. And the cool thing is what we're going to teach you at the event that's coming up in Vegas is a lot of specifics, again, about investing, but then there'll be a lot of universal success principles. And that's what's very exciting. The universal success principles not only work in investing, they work at virtually everything you do every single day. That's why there's universal success principles. And I know we also have something very special. I don't think, Ray, I'm allowed to say what it is, but I do know that every person who shows up in Vegas, not just based for the event, but actually shows up for the event is going to get something very incredibly unique. I think I do indeed know what it is, but I know I'm sworn to secrecy. But I will tell you that it's worth showing up just to get what they're going to be giving everyone who does show up. And it's just another great way the company is doing the right thing for the people who are part of the community. So we're all very excited to have you out. If you've never attended anything like this before, I promise you, it could be truly life altering. It'll definitely serve the purpose of helping you in the business sense, but it can go way, way beyond that. And I think the most important thing is it's it's really the genesis of us creating this community, um, it, 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 the 2.0 version. I know it's been around for a while, but now we're ready to really take this thing to the next level. And I just can't wait to meet as many of you in person uh, I'll enjoy the part where I get to be on stage and share some knowledge with you. But more importantly, I look forward to the meetings after the meetings and the opportunities to get to know you in person, find out who you are, what your needs are in the way myself and the team can best serve you. So definitely do whatever it takes to come to Las Vegas. I assure you, it will be well worth every penny that you spend. With that, I'll turn it back over to you, Ray, so you can introduce our next speaker. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Can't wait to hang out. Um, either Dolph or Arnon, uh, or if, if you're unmuted, if uh, I don't know who wants to go first, but come on out. You're good to go, buddy. Thank Hello you. from London. Arnon, how are you, my friend? <laughs> very, very good. Um, yes, good to be here. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody can hear me or if I'm coming through video. Let me just... No, there we go. See you, buddy. Thank you. Okay, great to see everybody. Uh, I'm not walking the streets of Paris like Mark. Uh, I'm in lovely London. So uh, sending all my regards from uh, beautiful London to all our listeners, everyone who's connected. And before I share maybe a few words of inspiration, motivation, I just want to take an opportunity to thank Mike, uh, thank Ray, and thank, thank the whole team for everything they're doing, not only to push the dreams, of so many people forward so that you, me, all of us can live a life of happiness, more joy, inspiration, motivation, financial freedom, but really committed to making 
you know, this world a better place. And I've been asked to speak and share some words of wisdom with all of you, and I'm excited to be in Vegas. So let me, let me say this, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna make this short and sweet. I'm gonna leave you with a quick story and I'm gonna leave you with maybe a piece of wisdom for all of you to think about. First of all, let me say, I've been sworn to secrecy, as you already heard Mark say, um, we, I can't really share with you what's being lined up uh, in Vegas for all of you, but it is above exciting. And I am so, so chuffed to have the opportunity to be there and to meet all of you and see all the smiles and feel the energy of this community and this tribe. And uh, really, you know, there's something lined up very special for all of you. But I want to share with all of you um, two things. And the first thing is, is a story. Many, many years ago, in about 2004, there was a gentleman, some of you might heard of him. His name is Mark, Mark Zuckerberg. Any, anybody ever heard of Mark Zuckerberg? No, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so just a quick story. You know, in 2004, Mark Zuckerberg invited five people, five people into his dorm, into his dorm room. At, uh, at Harvard Business School. And he invited these five friends to share with them a great idea, a great opportunity. Only two of the five showed up. And guess what? Those two gentlemen today are both billionaires. Now, when I say billionaires, I mean billionaires with a B. And so one of the lessons that I've taken out of that quick story is that and what I've come to understand about life is success doesn't come to you, you go to it. And I believe that 80% of success is just showing up. And you know what? Most people don't show up in their life. And so let me say this. If you're sitting here right now, if you're listening to my voice, if you've heard what Mike has said, and you're listening to Ray, and you're listening to what the vision is of the company moving forward if you're sitting here listening or maybe standing and listening right now i can tell you right in the right place at the right time i believe there are no mistakes in the universe and here's the thing the universe rewards people that show up so if you're listening to my voice right now you're obviously supposed to be here and you've got an opportunity to show up in your life show up in vegas where there's going to be fireworks and potentially life-changing opportunities for all of you all of us. And I'm going to leave you with a with maybe some words of wisdom. Some of you might have heard this before. One of my great teachers, he always said this. He said, welcome opportunities into your life because you never know which one will switch everything on. And I'm sure if you're going to come to Vegas, you're going to come across great teachers, great trainings, inspiration, motivation, but you never know what is the one thing that might be said, shared, heard by you that can turn everything on. So on that note, if you're listening to me, I want to welcome you, invite you to join us in Vegas. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a lot of uh, time together. We're going to learn, we're going to grow. And uh, I'm looking forward to meeting all of you. So on that note, I'm going to pass the microphone back to Ray, back to Micah. Thank you all of you for your time. And I'm looking forward to meeting you in Vegas. Thank you, Arnon. I really appreciate it. Dolph, are you on? I am indeed. And hello, everyone. And it is a pleasure to be here. Thank you all for having me. I am uh, very happy to hear Mark speak again and to hear Anon. It's one of those things when you go last, it's like you're thinking, man, they've said it all, but here's what I want to add to it. When motor vehicles were introduced into New York City, there were people who wrote letters to the editor, letters of complaint, that all the boys who went around scooping up all the horse manure were going to be put out of work. And you know something? They were. Technology brings across change, and a lot of people aren't happy with it because they miss out. But can you imagine if we'd banned motor vehicles because the horse pooper scoopers would have been put out of work? And it's the same with what's happening with Uber. <clears throat> Uber, by the way, now gives more rides than all of the world's taxi companies combined, and they don't own a single vehicle. 
in New York City, again, to pick on that city, they used to pay $3 million for a so-called medallion that gave them the right to be a taxi driver. And now Uber has wiped that market. So initially, all over the world, in fact, where you are, Mark, Uber was banned. People used to turn Uber cars over. They banned it for a while. They were banned in London for a while. But the march of progress made that this was going to happen. And we've seen a lot of resistance against cryptocurrencies and the like. But the march of time is on our side. It's going to happen in one way, shape or form. And it's true, you know, Anon just said it, that, that success is where opportunity meets preparation. And if you wait for everything to be a given, then you'll be an also ran. You know, you've shared stories of particular people, uh, Mark Zuckerberg inviting five people. Originally in the, the company Apple, I don't need to ask if you know who Apple is, there were three people. There was Steve Jobs, of course, uh, Steve Wozniak, and then Ronald Wayne. And he had a 10% stake in the company. And he didn't see a future for that company. And after a mere 12 days, he sold his 10% share back to the two Steve's for an astounding, you won't believe it, $800. And given that that company is now worth around 2.3 trillion, I think you've got an idea as to what his stake, his 10% stake might have been worth. So is everything guaranteed to succeed? Of course not. Think back to when Google came out with Google Glasses. These were spectacles that you could wear, and they would project images of what normally would be on your computer screen, or your phone screen, onto the glasses so that you could read these things while you're walking around. I was on the verge of buying a pair. I wish I had not way because I bought them and it didn't work. But that didn't work. But now we're looking at something bigger and better. So technology keeps up its relentless match. And you have a choice right now to decide whether you want to be part of that or whether you don't. And I always say the world is divided into three kinds of people. There are those who make things happen. There are those who watch things happen. And then there are those who wonder what happened. And you have a choice every day of your life to decide which of those categories you want to be in, in everything you do in life. And some people just like to, to make things happen. You know, the time I've been blessed in talking with Micah, he is a doer. He makes things happen. And are there challenges? Of course there are. There are many challenges in life. And sometimes the more successful you are, the more challenges you face. Because not everyone likes other people's success. And it's how you negotiate these things that really matter. That's why one of the, the biggest maxims I can give you is that it's not what happens to you in life that counts, but how you react to it. What do you do about it? And what do you learn from it? And life is a series of progressions like that. And if we learn a little bit each day and become a little bit wiser, then we're all going to be better off. And here's the thing. Some people are wise and some are otherwise. <laughs> so, you know, you can never learn less. And I am an event junkie, not only because I get invited to speak there, but I, when I go to an event, even if I'm speaking, I listen to everyone else. I don't learn much when I speak. I learn from the audience, by the way. So it's not as if I learn nothing but I learn from the other speakers. So absorb all the information you can. If you've got the opportunity and the ability to get to Vegas, why would you not go? To me, it's a no brain. What's the worst that can happen? You meet some fun people, you do some fun side activities, and you might learn something that could change your life. Everything that happens to us can change the course of our life forever. Why would you not do it? Embrace this opportunity. So I'm super excited. I'm super excited to be going there. And I think Micah knows that I'm the kind that takes action because we were on a call. I happened to be in Malta. He mentioned that, um, you know, they've had the store that had just opened in Amsterdam. He said, well, I happen to be going there tomorrow. So the very next day, within 12 hours of our call, I was shooting a video clip of the stall in the Calvist heart of, this, heart of Amsterdam and sent it to Mike and Karen, the, the woman who, who introduced us. So, um, you know, sometimes you have these opportunities and you can say, I'm going to think about it. And you think about it for three years. And then you say, dang, that would have been a good idea. I wish I'd taken part. Or you can say, you know what? I want to give this a go. Does everything I try work out? Of course not. But Einstein said, he who never fails is he who never tries. I guess it was written in an age before we became gender non-specific. But the person who never tries is the person who, who never succeeds at anything. Get out there and try. Fail fast, fail forward. 
the reason I am where I am, I believe, is I've been willing to make lots of mistakes because we don't have successes or failures. We have successes and learning opportunities. And those who have had the most learning opportunities in my mind tend to have the most successes too. So with that, I want to hand it back to you, Ray. Thank you all for being here. I hope to see you soon. I hope to get to know you all. I hope to catch up with some of you that I do know again and um, see you very soon in Las Vegas. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dolph. Ladies and gentlemen, three industry legends right there in the last 20 minutes. You do not get that kind of talent under one roof ever. So I hope to see you in Vegas uh, right now. You can get a single ticket uh, for $5.49 and a couple ticket for $8.99. Get registered. We only have around 40 rooms left at the room block at the Palazzo Hotel. Four days, three nights, October 30th, 31st, November 1st. And uh, don't leave until November 2nd, though, because the grand finale on that Tuesday evening is something very, very, very special we're all going to do. We're going to be uh, rafting off NFTs, giving away crypto. We have a Halloween costume party. Uh, it is going to be lights out, the thing that's going to put us all into momentum and uh, on its way to selling this company in a few years, in my opinion, uh, one of the largest sales in, uh, in business history. So I'm going to pass it off to my partner, Micah Thaird, and we'll continue the call. All right. Awesome, Ray. Thank you so much. And uh, we did manage to drag Hakan off the football field, kicking and screaming, wanted to stay there. Like the kid he is, as soon as he entered those gates, um, it's hard to get his attention. And so, <laughs> so I believe we succeeded with that. And uh, he is actually here now. So Hakan, do you want to unmute and um, join us, please? Well, a big um, welcome to everybody that's on the call. Sorry, my I've lost my voice a bit uh, because <laughs> of being on the pitch. But you know, we have a slogan uh, to create more miracles. We have to create the miracle football team, which has just started the season at the top of the league. So, uh, if you love football, just know that whichever uh, whichever uh, thing that we you know touch or uh, want to do we, we try to do the best so i wasn't on the call but i believe that everybody has seen what we've built especially on the online and on the virtual post what i would like to say is um, after six years of a lot of work and time and effort that's been put together what i see in front of me as a technology is second to none uh, you know like uh, you just said, uh, you need to try and then succeed. I think we've done the best of that try. And what we have in our hands at the moment is something that nobody has. When it comes to the virtual pass, again, it's a unique product. I'm very proud of it. I know it can go global very quickly. The back end of these um, systems are all complete. So, um, Miracle as a technology, as a uh, sports fan, and everything we do as a team, we're ready to share all this success together with everybody that's going to join us, especially at Vegas. So I would personally be delighted to see you all there. Um, um, well, that's it for now. Um, if you have anything, any questions, I'm, uh, I, do, I do. I do. You, you don't get away that easy, Hagan. Um, okay, so you know, people are itching just to kind of get, and I, I want you to maybe pick five of the top news events that's happening that you feel is a huge thing for the company. Also, give us a little bit leading up uh, from now up into the next two months what you're seeing. Uh, and what Miracle is doing, because we're kind of at that particular critical point of really going public. Even though we have a store in Amsterdam and we're open, we're doing business every day and doing business every day in Cyprus, um, they haven't seen nothing yet, right, Haka? Okay, so let me answer that uh, question. So first of all, uh, the structure 
of the company with um, with the growth that we're in with we're currently in the process of turning the company into a holding company and um, we have obtained a license in portugal as well so a holding company will be based in portugal and we are moving all our local companies which are germany france spain uk turkey cyprus lithuania estonia montenegro all these countries uh, underneath the holding company so that's a structure when it comes to the milestones that we're we've done well as you said we've got successful businesses in cyprus and we've got a very successful business in holland so what we're currently doing we're at the edge uh, hopefully next week open in germany as a store we're currently on the construction in belgium where we've already obtained the license because our um, holland license is a benelux license which covers belgium and luxembourg to, along with um, holland we are still in the process of completing the fca license in the uk which should take no more than 30 days which is something very difficult to establish and the experience that we've had in the other EU countries has led us um, to obtain this license swiftly and um, in a constructive way. Now, when it comes to the online that I just mentioned, we're going live big time with the online on the 15th of October. And that's like two and a half weeks away now. And we will be marketing our online and our stores both in Turkey and Germany um, through CNN Turk, CNBC, NTV, Fox. All these TV channels will be talking about Miracle and you will be seeing adverts. Um, so, we're, so we're starting the global marketing activity. Um, and we're, along with the virtual post, we have many um, e-commerce sites globally, which we're currently in negotiation of um, signing contracts and rolling them out. So in the next two months, I would say stores opening in Germany and Spain. Maybe a surprise for Vegas, which I'm not going to um, give about, up the moment. What about France? What about France? France, we will have um, just after Vegas, but we've got something at Vegas as a surprise of an opening. Uh, which you know what it is. Uh, yep. So, and then really aggressively from mid October, pushing aggressively in Turkey, Germany, uh, and following Holland and Spain on the online side. That, that's what that's what's coming. Give me a little bit of specifics on Spain. What have we done? Where are we at? We have, we have currently um, leased. Two stores, Madrid and Barcelona. We're currently in the designing process of Madrid, waiting for the measurements um, from for Barcelona. So next week, sometime we'll start the designs for that store as well. But for Madrid, uh, by the end of next week or the beginning of the following week, we'll have the, the full designs of Madrid. And as soon as the designs are done, they start we building. Start the furniture. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, set up. Said, regulatory for it's... Spain is that that's basically we're good to go, right? Because it's a registration. We've done the registration. We've um, set up the company. That's all done. Stores going to go under construction. We've got the online ready. I don't know if you've been on through the new app, which is fantastic as well. So the new app will be in Spanish uh, live mid october towards the end of october so all those rev delivery channels will be uh, allowing the users to use not only buy and sell but also the miracle deal awesome at october, at october. locations uh uk what's the what's the update on that we've got currently 14 options that we're looking at 
Ninety percent of the first story is going to be in Holborn. Okay, that's how it looks. So we've we've chosen really of those. We've chosen two of the in Holborn, which we're negotiating, not with the landlords. The landlords that side is being negotiated, but just going through the process with the lawyers. So you know, lawyers take two to three weeks. So we'll have the first lease in the UK in two to three weeks, which most probably is going to be Holborn, okay. which is in it is in the city. And that's where Amazon is. The goal to this. sign that lease is it's very close. It's very close to the Amazon store in Holborn. Okay. And the goal to sign that lease is this month? We'll sign the lease this month. Okay. Um, you said we're hopefully opening Germany. Where are we at? Oh, screens up, furniture in? Furniture um, in. Employees, fun training. Fun furniture, furniture in, screens up and training this week, and then we open. All right, cool. So we, we've hired the staff, we got people in the staff we The staff we have, they're, yeah. they're already trained. We will, two of the staff was already trained. Mm -hmm. We will hire two more, and they will be trained uh, as we open. Awesome, okay. Um, Mallorca, looking there, no. Mallorca, Mallorca, oh, come on. So after Mallorca, we, we, we couldn't close the deal with the lawyers. Okay. So we're looking for another site in Mallorca. The okay. Mallorca, we're still looking at uh, another option. It didn't go through. Okay. So all of the advertising, the, 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 I guess you could say the plan, the assets, the, how it's going to run, where it's going to run has all been submitted to these networks. We that... have for all these countries, we have the next 12 months marketing plan. Um, and, and Mehmet, I mean, what you can do maybe, um, through the week, if, if you want, or next Saturday, you yeah. can actually get Mehmet to present the marketing plan. Uh, yeah. if, if, if you think it will be. Um, a value add because there's a lot of work there there's a lot of planning yeah. there but it's not only for one country it's for many countries and it's not only for one channel it's it's tv it's radio it's uh, outdoor it's digital yeah. marketing so all those channels have been planned and and the plan is there and all the uh, partners that we're going to be using for those services are all being signed contracts so so everything is in place on the marketing side Right, and Miracle is paying for all the national and international marketing, right? The MFA is in Correct, place. correct. And so you basically duplicate, go to the next country, um, run it there again. What's the biggest, what do you think is going to be the biggest revenue coming out of Spain initially? Where's the money going to be made initially? It will be buy and sell at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But after the first quarter, it will be um, the miracle deal will be picking up, and and in the next after that, when we get to month six, miracle deal will pass by itself. Okay. Um, two two deals that I think are really exciting. One is I think the deal in in uh, Germany with the with the electronic Cuba. terminal. Yeah. Um, the other one I think is that's exciting. Is we have already, we have already, already on my last call. I did say that we've got um, ten thousand for each country. They should arrive um, in those countries by the end of October. That's they will Germany and, and Turkey, or what? Which two countries? Spain, Germany, and Spain. Ten thousand terminals for each country, ready to go. Correct. Okay. Paid, and it's. It, it's um, getting ready to be um, transported from China, yes. And so the Schufer deal is they already have half a million accounts for merchant account processing. We yeah, but we're not, gonna use, we're not going to use we're not going to use all ten thousand of those terminals for the Schufer deal. Most probably we'll use five six thousand because uh -huh. what we what I want to do is at least uh, get one petrol chain uh, to be onboarded. Because along with Shufa, um, I, I want us to have our corporate uh, contracts as well. Yeah. So we're splitting it's a, like it's a little bit of a higher pay for us if we're going direct, right? Instead of going through an existing. It's a bit more profitable for us. Yeah, more profitable. Got it. 
and Spain. Do you anticipate that we will be able to leverage the same way in Spain? Find uh, Spain, 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 with um, Moreno's uh, last couple of meetings, which he's going to share um, this week. He's going to present what is established. It looks like we've already got three um, outsourced sales companies that do cold calls. That especially one is in the electricity business, and they believe they can roll out fifty thousand terminals in the next twelve months. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's let's talk a little bit about UK because UK is what we're selling right now. Like that's the UK the is sort of got like your, UK, your, your start, right? So give so us you know, a little bit on it. Okay. Just so you know, my background is the UK. Yeah. So rolling out ATM, POS terminals, virtual POS into the UK is what I've done for years. And I've done it with much weaker products. Um, as with, with this product, where you don't actually have a competitor at the moment in the territory, with um, the outsource agents that we will use and for the corporate direct corporate sales that we will do is a market that um, we will move very fast because I've done it before. Very cool. Yeah, I know you, you, you sold 27 locations in your first week. Is, is that number one? That, that was just my first week. I carried on. So, yeah, I know how to get into Costcutter. I know how to get into Londis. I know how to get into Spa. All those convenience stores. You know, get maybe signing one exclusive deal for six months exclusivity with either BP or Shell and rolling out to the petrol stations. I know the, the, the path we need to take. In the rollout of those, uh, and that's both terminals. the electronic terminal and maybe the ATMs. Correct. Very good. Because if, if, because if you recall, uh, any licensed, unlicensed ATM in the UK, they pulled them all out. So that where there was a market, that market is actually re-emptied. Right. So there's there's basically holes in the ground where we can <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly where it needs to be. exactly, exactly. And, and and the good thing is you actually because the merchant knows the number of transactions you can cherry pick your locations right and you have the data on on ATMs across the world um, obviously they're doing pretty amazing uh, you put them up. And they get business right that's my understanding and if they don't we just move the machine that's it obviously i mean the capex for a terminal is much lower um, and the opex is higher still on the atm but on a transaction base the commission that you're generating versus a terminal is also much higher on the electro uh, the the atm is higher than the yeah. electronic terminal of course i yeah. mean with the terminal, you're looking at two or three percent, where on the ATM, you're looking at eight, not eight, ten percent. Right, right, which I know. And our cost is, is very low because we're doing the transaction in our own exchange. We don't have. Yeah, uh, correct. But the, as I said, the, the capital expenditure is much higher than an electronic terminal. So on one, yeah. you're talking about hundreds of dollars, and the other one, you're talking about thousands of dollars. So uh, that's yeah. a balance that we need to put in our forecast. Right, and it's cash in and cash out. Best machines right. on the planet, right? Done, done by General Bytes. Yeah, um, it's cash in and cash out, and we will use, especially for UK, we'll be using Brinks as our CIT service. Mm -hmm. That's cash in transit, and then through Europe, you've you either got the option of Brinks or Securico as as companies that give that service. That's that's there. So, so infrastructure on machines that break is third party. We have that lined up. I imagine. Yeah, we 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 are we are an operator. We, we we're not into the manufacturing of the terminals. We're not into the maintenance. We're not into the uh, additional services like cash in transit. That that's not our job. Our job is to operate the terminal with our products that we actually deliver through them. Awesome. So overall, Hakan, are you pleased with where we are now? Are you happy with Mark, this Mark, huge Mark, team I, of salespeople that are out there helping us grow? What's what's your overall feeling on everything? I, I think I think two things I can say there. I mean, if you remember, like ten days ago, 
I called you. Um, um, I have, I mean, we were in the room and, and Ray was there and Jason was there and it's not me. And I said to you, call the team and get them to give you an update of what they saw, if you recall. Yeah. So I am over happy of what we've built, number one. Number two is the actual structure. You know, you can build the best product in the world and, and you can sell the best product in the world, but the actual structure and the compliance and the risk, if you can, you need to manage that as well because we're in a financial technology market. We have invested in uh, not only our IT developers, not only in our sales team, but we've, we've invested a lot in um, our legal team and compliance and, and risk. That's the comfort that I have. I know that maybe things can be a bit late because compliance court guys are not the fastest in this world, but they make sure that you don't, um, you just don't, because you, you can, you know, uh, without knowing, uh, you can do a, a mistake. And, and the fact that those breaks are there on the company, that's very healthy. And that, and that, and that makes, gives me a lot of comfort. Yeah. And so, um, I guess to finish this up, you know, what really, you know, for we're you, about to, Micah, the, the reality is we're about to boom and explode. Okay. That we, we have, uh, partners in any, all these countries. Now those are established. We have structure that can filter all this and deliver. So as a company and product, we're about to explode the, the, the plane has already left the, left the ground. It, mm -hmm. it just lock it up. That, that's how it is. Uh, I'm very happy and very comfortable. Awesome. So you see put it this way, put it this way. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be going and enjoying um, football games. Right. <laughs> I know, I know it, it's, uh, uh, I don't know if, if, if you put miracle miracle team here, it'd be an even, uh, uh level of uh, passion and, and interest. I, I, I totally get it. Um, all right. I think, um, we well, appreciate sorry. the time, yeah. obviously. Sorry for being late. As I said, I really appreciate everybody on the call. Um, believe me, being late, I was uh, spending my time with youth and, and you know, giving them the passion and uh, help that they needed as well. That's how we're going to grow a community, right? We need the youth to yeah. follow with knowledge and passion. So, yeah. so that's what it was. Uh, and thank you. Yeah, thank you, Haka. Thank you for the five and a half years of work, hard work you did before we showed up. And uh, we won't let you down. We will uh, make sure that you uh, and this company uh, gets to where it needs to be and where it's supposed to be. And it's a protected company. It's a blessed company. And uh, we are a blessed community. So thank you so much, Haka. Thank you. Thank you, guys.